Hello and welcome. We're continuing to read through the book of Psalms, and tonight we find ourselves in Psalm chapter 38. This is another Psalm of David, and this is a Psalm that is known as a penitential Psalm. David is clearly recognizing that sin has caused destruction in his life. He's suffering physically because of his sin. He's suffering mentally. He's also suffering because people are abandoning him. And because of his sin, he now lies prey to those who would come against him, his enemies, because he's susceptible to them. And ultimately, this is a good reminder for us. It's a good warning for us of the destruction of sin. You see, sin always paints a beautiful picture, and that's why we're tempted, but it never shows us the troubles that lie in the wake. And so as we read this psalm together, let's remember that. Let's be warned in our own heart. And ultimately, let's examine our heart. If there's any sin in your life as you're listening and reading along with me, quickly uproot it. Quickly turn from it. Learn from David. Listen to the words that he uses here. And forsake your sin. Turn away from it. Let's read together in Psalm chapter 38. If you have your Bibles with you, turn and follow along as I read. A Psalm of David for a memorial. O Lord, rebuke me not in your wrath, and chasten me not in your burning anger. For your arrows have sunk deep into me, and your hand has pressed down on me. There is no soundness in my flesh because of your indignation. There is no health in my bones because of my sin. For my iniquities are gone over my head. As a heavy burden, weigh, they weigh too much for me. My wounds grow foul and fester because of my folly. I am bent over and greatly bowed down. I go mourning all day long. For my loins are filled with burning and there is no soundness in my flesh. I am benumbed and badly crushed. I groan because of the agitation of my heart. Lord, all my desire is before you and my sighing is not hidden from you. My heart throbs, my strength fails me and the light of my eyes, even that is gone from me. My loved ones and my friends stand aloof from my plague, and my kinsmen stand afar off. Those who seek my life lay snares for me, and those who seek to injure me have threatened destruction, and they devise treachery all day long. But I, like a deaf man, do not hear, and I am like a mute man who does not open his mouth. Yes, I am like a man who does not hear and in whose mouth are no arguments. For I hope in you, O Lord. You will answer, O Lord my God. For I said, may they not reject over me, rejoice over me, who when my foot slips would magnify themselves against me. For I am ready to fall, and my sorrow is continually before me, for I confess my iniquity. I am full of anxiety because of my sin, but my, but my enemies are vigorous and strong, and many are those who hate me wrongfully, and those who repay evil for good. They oppress me because I follow what is good. Do not forsake me, O Lord, O my God. Do not be far from me. Make haste to help me, O Lord, my salvation. Not only is this a good reminder of the folly of sin, the dangers of sin, the destruction of sin in our heart, but also the mercy of God. If we notice, David is also trusting in the Lord, confessing his iniquity, and he knows that the Lord loves him, that the Lord is the one in whom he takes refuge. So friends, if there is sin in your life, go to the Lord with it. He is ready to forgive. He eagerly seeks to forgive. He is a God of grace and of mercy. He is a God of love who proved his love so much by sending his son. Remember, he sent his son. He did not spare his son. And he who did not spare his son, but delivers him over to us all, for us all, how will we ever think that he could withhold anything good from us? Go to him and seek him as David does here. Well, let's pray together. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are ultimately the God of justice, that you were the God of that sees all things. And Lord, that you are a God that 
is also a God of mercy, a God of kindness, Lord, a God of patience, Lord, that you long suffer, that we can come to, Lord, because you have given us your son. And Lord, we find forgiveness from sin, cleansing of our hearts, Lord, when we come to you in repentance. And Father, we learn from David here, Lord, Father, of the destruction of sin, the, the lies that sin tell us, Lord. And Father, the end, Lord, of sin, that we are tempted in our own hearts, but sin seeks to, to kill us, Lord, to take our life from us. There is no wisdom in sin. Father, it is always foolish. It is always folly. Lord, I just pray for all who are listening in, Father, that, Lord, that through this psalm and through your word, Lord, there would be an examination of heart. And Father, that any sin that is bringing pleasure in their life, Lord, they would see the end. Lord, they would see the deception in it. Lord, they would see that destruction is, is lying in the wake of sin. And that they would quickly forsake it and go to you and seek you for mercy and grace, Lord, and forgiveness. Father, we thank you that you are a merciful God. We thank you, Lord, that that David says that my heart throbs, my strength fails me, and the light of my eyes, even that has gone from me. Lord, though he, Father, is suffering, Lord, he still seeks you. He seeks you, though he has sinned against you, he seeks you because he knows you are a merciful God. And Lord, that, Father, he says, for I hope in you, O Lord, and that you will answer the Lord, my God, and Lord, that his confidence is in you, that Lord, your loving kindness is the anchor of his soul, that he knows you to be a merciful God. So Lord, no matter how far we have traveled away from you, Lord, no matter how grievous, outrageous our sin is, Lord, we know that you are a God of mercy that we can turn to you and confess our sin and, and find forgiveness. Lord, I thank you at the end of this psalm that David cries out, do not forsake me, O Lord, O my God. Do not be far from me. Make haste to help me, O Lord, my salvation. Lord, we remember the words of Peter when the teaching was hard of Christ and many of his disciples wander away. And Jesus says to him, will you wander away too? And Peter says, where would we go? You have the words of eternal life. David says here, you are the Lord of his salvation. Lord, he is crying out to you, looking to you for refuge. And, and Lord, you are indeed our only hope. So Father, I just pray that you would grace us, Lord, with hearts of repentance, Lord. Lord, that you would grant us grace to hate our sin, to hate what is evil, to love what is good, to love what is holy, and not to be deceived, but to grow in wisdom, Lord, to quickly forsake sin, to quickly interpret it biblically, and Father, to follow the way of Christ in our hearts, that this would be a warning to us that we do not have to go the route of sin, but Father, if there's any sin in our hearts, we know that, Lord, we can come to you with it and we can find mercy and forgiveness and peace. So, Lord, I just thank you. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your loving kindness, Lord. And I just pray for, for sovereign grace. I pray for all the people, Lord. Help us to be a people that quickly repent of sin. Help us to have tender conscience. Lord, that we would grow in our love for righteousness and walk in the ways of Christ. Lord, to imitate you as our beloved Heavenly Father and walk in love, sacrificial love for others as Christ perfectly demonstrated for us. Lord, we thank you. We love you, Lord. And, and indeed, you, Lord, you are the Lord of our salvation. We just give you thanks for this and praise. Amen. Well, thank you for spending time in God's word. I pray that this is continually a blessing to you, uh, reading through the Psalms and uh, 
I just pray that this, this psalm would uh, encourage you to take a, a close look into your heart, uh, to uproot sin, to get people involved in your life, and uh, to turn away from sin. Sin will always bring destruction, but we have a God, a Heavenly Father, and His obedience and the things that He commands are far greater than sin. And the reward that we have in walking in him is far greater than any pleasure uh, of this world or of sin. My friends, I pray that this is a, an encouragement. I pray that this is a challenge to you. Don't delay. If there's sin in your heart, go to the Lord, confess it, uproot it, seek help from others. And may, may you walk in his ways always. God bless you.